Today we're going to talk about medical school histology basics, cartilage and bone. We'll talk about the cells of both cartilage and bone. Uh, we'll talk about the conversion of the skeleton from cartilage to bone, uh, uh, growth of uh, lung bones, uh, and we'll talk about uh, the different characteristics of cells, the cellular, cellular characteristics of cells that make possible for the production of, of bone. Uh, and the overall functions of cartilage and bone. Thank you. Medical School Histology Basics, Cartilage and Bone. Hi, I'm Larry Johnson. I'm a professor at Texas A&M University, and today we're going to talk about cartilage and bone. There's a host of cells that we have to be able to identify. There's chondroblasts, chondrocytes, uh, osteoblasts, osteocytes, um, osteoclast is another one. So there's a host of different cells that we have to spongy bone or compact bone, cartilage, perichondrium, muscle. There are various things that we'll have to, uh, to talk about today. Uh, but what is the function of cartilage of bone? Uh, in terms of evolutionary and embryology model of bones, here you can see that before we had bones, we have cartilage as our uh, uh, connective tissue uh, support. Also, a uh, cartilage slides across one another very easily like that, uh, and it's somewhat a little bit compressible, and so it prevents bone from touching bone at the articular surfaces and somewhat of a cushion. Bone now supports uh, land animals. Here we can see it also supports whales too, but here you can see this animal would not be possible to stand up uh, without bones. It also protects its vital organs, his, his, uh, liver, uh, his uh, lungs, uh, and it even protects the brain. Here we see the human with the skull uh, protecting the brain. And it's in the bone marrow that we have hematopoiesis. So here you see bone marrow, hematopoiesis is where uh, blood cells are made. So cartilage is a structure of support, uh, but also uh, in the adult you see it as a slipping slimy so that uh, it can uh, allow a movement in joints. And then bone is a, a major supporting structure uh, of the body. Now remember we talked about connective tissue. We had some pluripotent cells in connective tissue that could produce blood cells. Uh, Macrocaryocytes that produce platelets. Uh, they can produce a host of other cells, fibroblasts, even endothelial cells, mesothelial cells. Uh, but also it produces osteoclasts, which is from the, the monocyte macrophage series that eats up bone. Uh, and it has osteoblasts, which lays down bone. And whenever an osteoblast gets trapped in its little space, it becomes an osteocyte. And in cartilage, we have a chondroblast, which gets trapped in this lacunae or space, uh, and it becomes a chondrocyte. So there's five different cells here of the connective tissue that we can see. Now, if we start with cartilage, cartilage uh, has, has composed of three different types. Highland cartilage is what you see at the end of a chicken bone, the white, glassy looking material. Uh, and that's part at the articular surfaces where one joint, one bone is touching another one at the joint. And it's not touching because of the cartilage in between. And then we have elastic cartilage, and we have that in the ear. And the function of elastic cartilage is to re return to the original shape. You can fold up your ear and it will pop right back because of elastic cartilage. Uh, and then we have fiber cartilage. Fiber cartilage. Uh, is uh, interesting because it connects uh, tendon to ligaments of bones and to where we can see normally this would be like a ligament with all the connective tissue that we see here, the type 1 collagen, but located right in there are the chondrocytes as you can see. So here's a chondrocyte which is lo located in this lacunae, lacunae and lacunae is equal space. So that's the space where the cell has laid down extracellular matrix around it. So uh, if we take a look at uh, a joint, this is a joint of fetal elbow, uh, and we can see uh, the capsule around the cartilage, the perichondrium, 
And then we can see there's a host of cells, there's blue cells here, this hyaline cartilage, uh, and um, right at the growth plate, right in through there, the cartilage is changing to bone, is transformed to bone, and we'll talk about that. So here we can see that we have the hyaline cartilage, and this is going to be the hyaline cartilage uh, or the articular surfaces. And you see the synovial membrane that goes around it, so it allows this bone to move in relation to this bone. And we have dense irregular connective tissue uh, in the periosteum or the perichondrium, and there's a bone matrix. Now, in terms of, of uh, um, cartilage changing to bone at the growth plate that we see here and here, and actually uh, even uh, uh, whenever you go from a cartilage model to a bone model, you have an area of reserve cartilage, and then we have uh, proliferation where you see them all lined up there and then you have hypertrophy with the increase in size increased number here increased size and then they've become calcified when it does the extracellular matrix uh, is no longer diffusible uh, nutrients can can diffuse through cartilage but it cannot go through bone because of the calcification and that kills these cells here in the osteoclast uh, the macrophage like cell moves in and eats that up uh, and it's replaced by bone. And we'll talk about that later on at the epiphyseal plate. Here we see hyaline cartilage. Uh, here it is here, perichondrium on the other side. And we can see uh, a characteristic of hyaline cartilage is this isogenic group. So a group, they have interstitial growth. So one cell divides to produce other cells. Uh, and a whole group of cells is developed, group is developed from a single cell. And that makes an uh, isogenic group uh, that we have. This is uh, epithelium on the surface of the trachea that we see right in through there. That would be uh, uh, respiratory epithelium. And then we have dense irregular connective tissue here on either side of the perichondrium. If we look at the uh, ear, uh, this is the outer ear. Uh, and we can see epithelium here. Uh, there's epithelium there. So we've got skin on both sides. Uh, of the ear, but if you look at the elastic cartilage, it looks like hyaline cartilage. The isogenic groups are not as big, uh, but you have elastic fibers in between, and that's what we see, the elastic fibers for the elastic um, collagen. And here we can see this is a pin of the ear of a cat, and you can see uh, the, the blue here is the elastic fibers that you can see there. So these are the chondrocytes that are trapped in the lacunae or space and this is a chondroblast so right at the edge of uh, the perichondrium uh, and the cartilage is where you have uh, the chondroblasts which grow by appositional growth these guys differentiate into cartilage cells but of course you have dense irregular connective tissue in the capsule itself now fiber cartilage is different uh, in that uh, it's between two different uh, types, uh, between a tendon, a ligament, and bone. And so here we can see the fibroblasts of the tendon or ligament, and these are big bundles of, of collagen, type 1 collagen, that you see in through there. But right at the transition between this and bone, this is bone down here, you have these, um, these chondrocytes, that are located in here, and they like differentiated from some of these fibroblastic-like cells, uh, and they actually uh, produce type 2 collagen, which you see a little bit darker right in through there, type 1 there, type 2 here. Uh, and so these are, are chondrocytes um, trapped in their lacunae uh, and, uh, and uh, 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 in the fiber cartilage. Uh, and no, there's no perichondrium. There's no perichondrium around it because they're already embedded in, in dense irregular connective tissue of the tendon or the ligament. So if we look at in the fetal elbow again, we look right here at the attachment. Uh, we can see lots of bundles of collagen uh, in through there. And then we can see these little cells all stacked up like this, each one of them in their little lacunae. And those are the chondrocytes of the fiber cartilage. You can see them here, there, there all in through here, and this is type 1 collagen uh, that would be part of the tendon or ligament. And also you can see skeletal muscle. So this is skeletal muscle uh, that 
uh, is where the muscle is going to be attached to the tendon uh, uh, eventually uh, so that the muscle, uh, skeletal muscle would regulate uh, location of the bone. If we see this in a, in a cat, uh, we can see uh, our model again. So these would be like a tendon in through there. And you can see the fibroblast here, fibroblast there. And then you can see the chondrocytes in the fibrocartilage. There's some right here. And you can see them in their lacunae right in through there. So you can see, and that's located right in this location right there, bone. Uh, and this uh, uh, cartilage attachment is right in right in through there where uh, the, the bone is attaching to, uh, to the tendon. So uh, we can see the articular surfaces, that is where one bone touches another bone, uh, and you can see there's a capsule around it. Um, and hyaline cartilage uh, has a perichondrium except at the articular surfaces, and the articular surfaces of perichondrium will be worn off, uh, that we can see through there. Articular is where one touched the other. Here we see a tibia, a fetal tibia, and you can see in this uh, region in through there where the cartilage is very active, surrounded by the perichondrium, and there's uh, a, a lot of activity here where you have a transformation uh, of the fibroblast-like cells to, uh, to uh, the cartilage cell, and this is uh, appositional growth, namely growth from, uh, from the side. Again, we can see that this is a sulfonated gags. That's what makes it uh, blue because of the uh, negative charges uh, that's on there. So this is cartilage, and these would be chondrocytes located in the lacunae, and this would be perichondrium. So these would be fibroblasts in through there. And right in between there, you have the chondroblasts. These are the cells that are transforming from the fibroblast-like cells that are located in the perichondrium, giving rise to the cartilage cells, uh, the chondrocytes when they get trapped in the lacunae, uh, and, and that's appositional growth as it gets wider. So we can see that at electron microscopic level, there's fibroblasts in through there. There, there's a chondrocyte trapped in this lacunae. Uh, uh, it produces type uh, 2 collagen. However, in between there is type 1 collagen. And you can see the type 1 collagen uh, right in through there with the periodicity uh, that you have. So appositional growth is in this area, uh, and the perichondrium is in this area. So these cells will be transforming. Maybe this is a, a, chondro, uh, a chondrocyte, uh, that, uh, a chondroblast, which will give rise to a chondrocyte. Now, one thing that's characteristic about cartilage that you don't have in bone, and that is you have interstitial growth. Interstitial growth is where one cell divides to give another one. You can see here where the membrane has separated these two cells. So one cell gives give rise to the other one, uh, and you can have a bunch of these. Uh, and that's what happens when uh, at the growth plate when the cartilage is expanded for the length of bones is that one cell divides, produce other cells, they line up, hypertrophy, die, and then that way the bone has increased in length. So here we can see in the embryo that we were cartilage. Our bone, our skeleton was cartilage at one time, and then it gets replaced, uh, and then you have uh, the epiphyseal plate where uh, you you grow. <coughs> uh, uh, before puberty, you start to grow, <coughs> uh, and uh, the bone cannot grow from within it, the cartilage has to grow, and then it's replaced by, by bone. And here we can see a compact bone which has these subversion systems. So this is the osteon, uh, and then these uh, osteocytes that are located in through there. And you have uh, lamellae, uh, circumferential lamellae. So this is the enosteum, periosteum that we have with the bone. So here's the cartilage at the end, and then um, you have primary spongiosa. You still have a cartilage core. You can see the blue core in there, but this is cartilage, and this is bone with a little bit of cartilage uh, in the various. So it would be compact bone on either side, and it would be a peri uh, perichondrium and a periosteum. It's a capsule. So we look again uh, at a, uh, uh, you can see the <coughs> density regular connective tissue of the a periosteum and the perichondrium uh, that we see, the hyaline cartilage, we can see 
um, this is also where you have <coughs> the fiber cartilage as well. If we look at the finger, at the growth plate, again, we got the different zones, the zone of reserve, proliferation, hypertrophy, calcification. So that's a repeating cycle at all the various different bones that we have at the growth plate, which would be right in through, right in through there. <coughs> so cartilage, um, primary spongiosum still has cartilage in it. And so all the different cells, the one cells on the side of these here are the osteoblasts. And the osteoblasts become osteocytes when they get trapped in their lacunae. Osteoid is bone. We can see that all the pink here that we see here, compact bone. This is spongy bone in through here. The other cell uh, is the osteoclast. Osteoclast is multinucleated cell uh, that we see here. We can see it there, more than one nucleus. And that's the one that breaks down bone. And so this one breaks down bone and osteoblast lays down bone. When, a, when the osteoid goes all the way around it, it's trapped in its lacunae, and it becomes an osteocyte. Osteoblasts give rise to osteocytes. So here we see cartilage. All this is cartilage in through here. These are chondrocytes. These are the osteoclasts. Yeah, you can see one there. You can only see a nucleus, one, one nucleus there. there. Does, and these guys who trap the lacunae are the osteocytes, and this is compact bone, and this would be the periosteum that we see. Uh, a similar type thing there, uh, cells on the surface uh, are, are laying down new bone, uh, uh, or it could be osteo, uh, osteoclast um, eating up bone. There's the osteoclast that we see right there, osteocytes. And here we see the trabeculae, the projection that we see there are the trabeculae, uh, and um, and we can see that this one still has a its primary spongiosum because it still has a cartilage core. Um, here we see electron microscopic view uh, of uh, the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which uh, is indicative of protein produce, production, and bone is protein type 1 collagen is a main component of bone uh, uh, and then you also have hydroxyapatite crystals which is what crystallizes bone that makes it hard uh, secretory vesicles that we see that are secreting the type 1 collagen and you have a large Golgi apparatus which uh, gives uh, puts a sulfur uh, on the proteins that are produced in the rough and plasma reticulum uh, to make collagen so rough in the plasma reticulum, Golgi apparatus, secretory vesicles, nucleus uh, of the of the these are osteoblasts. And here we look at uh, Tulum in blue. Uh, this is bone and through here, and this is cartilage. Don't worry about the different coloration; it doesn't matter. It was a staining problem. But here we see osteoclasts, which eat up bone. Osteoblasts, which are laying down bone. And this is a is a secondary spongiosum doesn't have cartilage core in it. Osteoid is bone. Lacunae is the spaces uh, that we can see there. Osteoclast, multinucleated cell, and these be osteoblasts laying down more bone. Now, if you look at compact bone, there's several things. You got concentric lamellae. You got an inner, a circumferential, and outer circumferential lamellae, and that was developed from appositional growth. And appositional growth is from the enosteum as well as the periosteum. So as a cell develops, it gets makes these layers here. In addition to that, you have the haversion system. So this is a haversion system here, and this is a haversion canal. And the nucleus, nutrients come through this canal, and it comes from the Volkmann's canal, from the outside through there, uh, feeding the haversion canal, which is where the nutrients go. And you can see, uh, this is a series of these uh, uh, um, these haversion systems, and they're long columns, and they're, they run down the length of bone. They don't just run at random, they run down the length of bone. And what it is, is osteoclasts have gotten together and made a hole, and then the osteoblast fills in the hole. So here we can see one of these, which is just about a quarter of one, and you can see Haversion Canal, uh, cement, lacunae as the spaces, uh, and lamellae uh, uh, are the 
the projections between one cell where one cell touches another cell and it gets nutrients from the gap junction. So from the Hermersian Canal comes blood vessels and nutrients uh, go through from, from cell to cell to cell uh, by these uh, uh, these lamina by these uh, uh, cavioli. So these projections in through your cavioli, these are different layers. One's laid down, another one's laid down. It lays down from the outside in, just the opposite of a tree uh, for this uh, version system. Here we can see the version system on ground bone. This is a version system here. Here's a canal. These guys here are the osteocytes that are trapped in the lacunae. Actually, what you see is a space, is a lacunae. Uh, that we see, and you can see uh, uh, the canaliculi uh, uh, projecting from one cell to another, providing nutrients from the virgin canal out to the various cells. We can see that again here. You can see the canaliculi, the lacunae that you can see, uh, and inside there would be the, <clears throat> the different uh, osteocytes. Uh, and so here you can see a version system. There's another one there, another one there. Uh, and as uh, the bone is remodeled, uh, it eats up some new ones and some old ones. Here again, we can see uh, this is the uh, inner circumferential lamellae that you see there. And then we can see another <coughs> a version system. A version system in through there with a version canal. <coughs> so inside compact bone would be spongy bone. So this guy, the stuff right here would be uh, spongy, spongy bone. So another uh, aversion system here and here where bone uh, is, uh, is, re is remodeling. So this is a compact bone, this is a aversion system, osteon, aversion canal, uh, lacunae, osteocytes uh, that are located in through there and the little spider legs into here are the canaliculi. Here we can see uh, unstained bone, uh, so these would be the Hebergian canals, Hebergian system will be around them. The Volkmus canal is what uh, attaches uh, nutrients uh, from, uh, from the outside uh, to the Hebergian canal. Again, Hebergian canals, and we can see osteocytes in through there in the Volkmus canal. On this slide, we can see uh, uh, the uh, uh, osteoblast on the sides, which are laying down new bone, osteoid, which is new bone, a lacunae, uh, osteocytes are trapped in a lacunae, and an osteoclast. Here's an osteoclast right there. Not there, that one's wrong, but this one and that one are osteo, osteoclast, osteoblast uh, right there, but that one's wrong. Um, uh, here we see the um, um, cartilage uh, at the epiphyseal plate. So you have bone up there, bone here, and cartilage in between there, which is growing uh, by uh, by interstitial growth uh, to make bone longer. Bone gets wider by by appositional growth, but it's interstitial growth that that it grows by by the length. Length is is interstitial growth for the cartilage uh, because bone can't do it. So it Cartilage does it, and then it's transferred, uh, made to bone. But the width goes by appositional growth. And so here you can see the different zones of the cartilage, as I said, the reserve, proliferation, hypertrophy, and calcification. You see those again and again. Uh, here we see uh, primary spongiosa. The primary spongiosa has cartilage in its core. The secondary spongiosa has osteoid in its core that we can see right there. So uh, all these different regions, you have a proliferation uh, by interstitial growth of cartilage, then you have the alignment as the cells are proliferating, then they have hypertrophy, then they calcify, then they're replaced, and that's uh, just a cycle that goes over again at the epiphyseal plate. And the transfer uh, of your uh, uh, cartilage uh, skeleton to your, uh, your bones. Here again, we can see the same type of thing with the different uh, uh, zones that we can see, the same different zones that we ca can see there. And uh, the function of cartilage and bone, uh, as we see in terms of summary, uh, is uh, embryo, 
uh, we had a cartilage skeleton. Uh, some uh, sharks only have a, a cartilage skeleton. Uh, and then for you to walk on land with all that weight there, you definitely have to have some bones to keep your, your shape. Uh, also, you can see the cells of the aversion system and the canaliculi, uh, which uh, allows nutrients to pass from one cell to another one, and of course, the different zones of cartilage growth. A couple questions that may be of interest, which is our true about anaconda bone growth. Anaconda bone, grown, bone growth is where bone is is trans is uh, use cartilage model and then bone develops from that. And one question, one answer is growth in width occurs by appositional growth. This is true. Okay, the growth uh, in length occurs at the epiphyseal plate by interstitial growth for cartilage followed by replacement of bone. True. So bone can grow by appositional growth. It cannot grow uh, by interstitial growth. Okay, and so uh, secondary spongiosa has an osteoid core. True. So the answer is, is E. Cartilage differs from bone in diffusibility of extracellular matrix. Uh, that's true. Uh, nutrients can diffuse through cartilage but not bone. The presence of isogenic groups, true, because isogenic groups are produced by interstitial growth and cartilage has it but bone does not. Ability of appositional growth, false. Uh, both have appositional growth. Um, and so the answer is D, A, and B. Here we see Big Bend. This is uh, actually, these are mountains of uh, Mexico uh, at the distance that we, that we see over there. So that's the end of the medical school histology basis, cartilage and bone. If this information was useful to you, please share it with your friends uh, and your colleagues and maybe consider um, uh, subscribe into the VIBS Histology YouTube site. Thank you.